Amen. Uh, I greet you all in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. As Zanele has said, I am Lundu Makanya. And um, I've been tasked to just uh, conduct uh, today's Bible study. Uh, so uh, firstly, our topic for today is uh, salvation. So uh, before we go on any further, I would just like to give, you know, everyone's understanding of what salvation is. So if I could get at least like, yeah, okay, wait, there are 18 of us. If I could at least get five responses of what uh, you guys think salvation is, I'd be very much happy. Uh, so yeah, I won't be picking people and be quite like racing against time for, um, already. So can I please have like five people? Just give me an understanding of what you think salvation, the word salvation is. If you were to just explain to someone on the road, a stranger or whoever, what would you describe salvation as? And what is your understanding of it? So yeah. Amen. Can I try and go first? Okay. Um, so, Mina, my understanding of salvation. So, firstly, if I think you can look at a definition of like salvation, Jay, just a normal term, if you can like look it over dictionary or over Google, it says it's deliverance from harm. A definition is salvation. So, for, firstly, for me, it's deliverance from harm. But then to ask in the context of Abazalan, what are we delivered from and who delivers us? I think we can base it on is that we share today, Masenda, if I will start, that is based on Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10. It says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord and believe in your hearts that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. So I think in our case, God has allowed us an opportunity to be saved by believing in our hearts. And all of these, give me now, I also read John 3 verse 16. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but may have eternal life. So I've been saved and now I have eternal life. I, I was perishing and each and every day, Bengi, I was moving more closer and closer into perishing, and I was perishing in each and every day, but now I've been saved and been granted the right to be called a child of God and to even have eternal life. Amen. Amen. Well said, well said, well said. Anyone else? Thank you, Zanele. Hi, everyone. Yes, Oh, okay. sorry, sorry. Yes, you can go ahead. Okay, so for me, it's almost uh, the same as what Uzanela was saying, but uh, I, I could add that mostly for us Christians, it's being saved from sin. Yeah, that's what I think. Okay, and can you elaborate by what you mean by that, or you just leave it like that? Yeah, can you just leave it like that? Okay, so being safe from sin. Okay, second person. Hello, guys. Hi, Tabile. Hi, I don't know if you guys can hear me. I'm having issues with my audio on my laptop. Am I like clear? Yeah, you're very audible, yeah. All right, so my understanding of salvation is... Um, that so salvation, I think, um, in terms of literacy or in terms of like um, language, they would say that it is derived from um, 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 like a Greek letter or something, a Greek word, I think, to be saved. But ideally, salvation is to be saved. So I think that is what my understanding of salvation is to be saved. So then I think the next question would be to be saved from what or to be saved from who or be saved from yeah so my understanding then is that it is to be saved um through the renewal of our minds and the transformation of our minds um from whatever else that is not that is sin basically that is not of god 
So what is sin? So sin is disobeying God, or disobedience to God. So man, so to just sort of like sum it all up, it is, so my understanding is to be saved. So salvation is to be saved through the renewal of our mind and, uh, and our hearts um, by the grace of God uh, from sin. So sin being any form of disobedience to God. So that is my understanding of salvation. Okay, thank you. Okay, last person now. Anyone else? Okay, I'll take it as if there's no one else. Okay, so yeah, pretty much what um, Zanele Tobida has said, as well as, okay, I don't know who the host is, unfortunately, but yes, as well as what? I think Olondek. Oh, okay, as well as Olondek. What they've just said pretty much sums up exactly what salvation is, because the, 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 the word of God says that in Romans, we have all sinned, for all have sinned and fallen short of God's grace. So the reason why we are saved or the reason why God gave Jesus Christ as his son to die on our behalf in order to save us from our sin. It's not because of the sin that we still do even while we, we are saved, mind you. But it's because of the sin that we are, we are born into, the sin of Adam and Eve that fell on us when, even before we were born. So we, we being born, barely we are being born into sin. So that is why God had to send Jesus as his son to die on our behalf because we were already, we were already in sin. So that's, a, that's what salvation is about, the sin and the disobedience that, 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 that the Toby is talking about, that we are being saved from, is the sin that we are born into, according to the Bible. So yeah, so that is salvation. Then okay, um, second question: How does one become saved? Uh, I'll need at least two people to answer that, and not Zanele, not Tobile, not Lundek. Any any two people can take that question. They sound like Kete. Uh, Sandy Siwe. Oh, your hand is up. Okay, yeah. You can, you can, you're allowed to speak. Uh, thank you, uh, MC. Um, I think um, the question of how a person uh, is saved, um, the Bible say, would say uh, a, a person agrees in the Bezak, would say that the Lord and believes in that the Lord uh, uh, Mm. I'm not sure if in a check can be right, but Gishon Jaloliti, Mutia Vuma, a calling it is you who best go box in this of a moment, and that's how a person gets saved. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Um, can I like I think I'm agreeing though because I think it's pretty much the same thing. Um, but just to agree with what Sandy is saying, I, I believe that it is then accepting and acknowledging Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and not only like a one-off thing, but continuously and constantly going through that. So it's not like a one-off salvation, but it's like a continuous salvation so you yes. you're constantly yes. saved by yes. acknowledging jesus and acknowledging his ways and acknowledging him everything that pertains to who he is amen thank you so yeah so it's pretty much that uh what just and was straying from is uh, romans 10 verse 9 which says that if, if you confess confess with your mouth with your mouth that jesus is lord and believe in your hearts that God raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. It's 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 not a it's not rocket science, basically. It's just a simple process as that. Confessing with your mouth and believing with your heart that Jesus is Lord and He died on the cross and was raised from the dead. Then that is how you become saved. So already by believing in that and being in agreement that you are already automatically you are a believer, then comes back to what Tobile is saying, 
it's not just that process that you do there at the altar after you've been convicted by the word of God, and then that's all. Then it's fine. You can go back to however I was living. So go right in dialogue because I'm, I'm what now I'm saved. But it has, it has, it's it's a it's a daily process. We are daily being saved because there are sins that we commit unconsciously even, and others that we do consciously. So we need the that the grace of God every single day. So salvation is a process. That's why the word of God also says that we could we should cultivate it, work on salvation. Not necessarily meaning that we are doing things in our own strength or trying to, you know, work on it like literally, but we're cultivating and pursuing holiness and pursuing righteousness every single time and pursuing to be obedient to the word of God. So that is why that is what Tabila meant when she said salvation is a daily process. So yeah, so thank you so much for answering those two questions. I hope uh, even those who didn't uh, respond have pretty much an idea of what salvation is and how one becomes saved. So um, yeah, so it brings me back to the main focus of the study. So there is an analogy that I'm gonna use to pretty much explain what um, salvation is and yeah, how one goes about to being up to, uh, as to be saved. So um, okay, so I, I I've, I've titled it the pursuit. So the pursuit being so there is the, my analogy is this. So there's a process. Firstly, a process in one and 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 I will use a common you know analogy, which pretty much excites everyone. Makuluyanga, which is relationships and umshat. So, uh, yes, so this is the analogy. So before a person can get married, they have to first be a proposal. So a proposal is a stage, which is pretty much exciting. It's, it's, it's very exciting because this is where the guy, guy needs to go and then guy proposes to go and ask for a hand in marriage. So that's, that's the, that's the, so the guy pursues the goal and then they, eventually propose and then they 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 ask for a hand in marriage so that that is what jesus first does ne? in revelation chapter 3 20 he says that um i hope we are reading or we're noting down because the bible study guys needs a pen and a paper so i hope we are noting down i first said that the title of this bible study will be the pursuit so and i'm now describing what the, in, 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 in an analogy of, of, of proposal before marriage. So that's what Jesus does before asking us for a hand in marriage with him, which is to be one with him through salvation. So would Revelation 3 verse 20, uh, it says that, look, I stand at the door and knock. If you hear my voice and open the door, I will come in and I will share a meal together as friends. So that is what Jesus is saying, that he stands at the door and knocks. If you hear his voice and open the door, he will come in. And when he comes in, he will now come in and dine with you as your friend. So how beautiful is that? That we, it's, it's so, this gives us a, a picture that, you know, salvation is not forced onto you. Salvation is not a thing whereby we people are shoving Jesus down your throat. It's, it's it's literally a decision. So this is what this part, this scripture highlights that it's a decision. Just as you take a decision when you say yes to a, a guy who is proposing you and asking for a hand in marriage, it is a decision. The guy doesn't force you and say yes, let's get married. I'm so shy. No, you have first he gains consent from you. This is what that is what Jesus does as well. He knocks at the door of your heart, and if you hear his voice and then allow him to come in, that is when he dines with you as your friend. That is like a such a personal thing. Because a friend, a friend is a personal, like it's, 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 it's a person who's like on another level. It's not just a stranger whom you just know randomly, but it, it, it means quite a lot for someone to call you their friend. So that is what 
That's the first step. That's the first step. So, in the first step of the pursuit, it's the proposal stage whereby Jesus knocks at the door of your heart and then if you let him in, he comes in and dines with you. So, you first have to give him permission. So, salvation is first a decision that you have to make. Then, secondly, the Bible says that secondly will be the agreement. So, the Bible says that can two work to work, walk together unless they have agreed. That is in Amos, I think chapter 2, 3, 2 verse 3, if I'm not mistaken, but you can double check. So this clearly shows that, that there, there, there aren't any two people that can walk together unless they've agreed to do that. Yeah, well, so, which is the same thing. Okay? When, 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 when the guy proposes to a girl, the girl has to agree in order for them to start this journey again okay, towards what? Towards marriage. And the Bible says that, um, okay, so once you have agreed, you are agreeing to now being one with the person. That is why the guy proposes with the ring. A ring kind of symbolizes um, a form of, um, you know, oneness. You know, even it's, it's, it's like a closed thing, it's like it's a, it's a circle. It symbolizes oneness and it also symbolizes a form of like uh, in, infinity, if I would put it that way, because there's no end in that circle. You know, a ring is like a circle, so there's no end to it. So it also means that, okay, now these people are going to be one with each other and there's nothing that's going to separate them for like forever. So this is like an, 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 an eternity kind of thing, which is exactly what... Um, Salvation is in, 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 that, in that term. That you are now agreeing, as you have agreed to being pursued by, God, by Christ, and you have, you have agreed to be one with Him through that scripture. It's in you to confess your sins and believe um, that Jesus died and rose again, you shall be saved. So you, have now, you are now agreeing to be one with Jesus. So when, 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 when a guy proposes, the, the ring that they use is probably quite expensive. It's probably from Browns or something. And, you know, those expensive brands. So he pays a high price for him to earn, you know, that, 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 that oneness with you, to be one with you in marriage. They have to, not just with the ring, obviously, with all these other stuff, the wola, what, 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 and, and what not. So yeah, not not just yes, not just with the ring, but with Lobola as well. Okay, my video is on guys and it's quite dark, so he's on Ole. But yeah, because uh, I'm using my laptop. So as I was still saying, so the the, the guy paid a, pays a high price for the for that the ring in order for the the for the goal, yeah to be one with them in marriage, through the lobola, through everything else that they have to pay for. So that is what Jesus also did on the cross of Calvary. He paid the price for our sins. His price was literally sacrificing his life. So that was Jesus' life, Jesus' uh, high price. He had to shed his blood in order for us to be redeemed from our sins. So that was the price that he paid. And when someone does that, you know, I, feel, I pretty much feel like you have to reciprocate, you know, as well. So you have to as well, you know, return to that in one way or the other. So that is why when now you get into this agreement to be one with Jesus or to be one with the person that has invited you in and asked you for a hand in marriage, there are things that we have to let go of. Yeah? You cannot come in into the marriage with the past toxicity of your previous relationships for example if the things that you knew would see you were the cause of the previous relationship ending i'm just making an example you cannot come with in the new relationship or in marriage with them there are things that you have to let go of in order for this marriage or this relationship to work and the same applies with our relationship with jesus so once you have agreed to be one with jesus and you've agreed and say, yes, I am now saved. I'm now a believer. I'm now a child of God. It costs you pretty much your life. There are a number of examples in the Bible 
um, in Matthew 18, yeah. I think it's Matthew, yeah, Matthew 18, we see where by um, Jesus, Peter, Peter, Peter is fishing, and it's like, leave that, I'll now make you a fisher of men. And Peter, without any question, without anything, he literally just leaves everything that he was doing in order to follow Jesus. So following Jesus for Peter cost, cost him, because fishing was his job. So that is what he made a living out of. So imagine someone coming and be like, drop that and come and follow me. And you literally do it without even questioning what's it. Where will, now be, where will now my source of income come from? Where will this, this, and this be? And they, we also find Andrew and James as well doing the same thing. On top of that. So that also shows us that <laughs> when Jesus calls you into a relationship with him, there's so many things that you have to leave behind. Even at some point, even your family, not necessarily that you are now going to be disrespecting them or abandoning them, but they have to know that you are now saved and that there are things that you can't involve yourself in if they are doing them, the things that unbelievers do. Yeah, but, so that's the cost of following Jesus. He says that the cost of following him, the person must be willing to deny themselves. Firstly, they must be willing to take up the cross. And thirdly, they must be willing to follow him. So denying yourself comes in so many ways. It means that you're putting the, the needs of others first before yours in this selfie generation that we are in whereby it's all about me 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 like uh if it doesn't benefit me then it's it's, it's not for me uh j uh yeah know your work blah 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 it's all about me basically in this generation we are in the selfie generation it's all about me me what lonely wants lonely gets what this this it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks so t t not as believers or as children of God, we don't follow that pattern. We do not follow that pattern. In in like in 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 when it when 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 the Bible says deny yourself, it means you are laying it down yourself, you know, like you are a servant basically and you are sacrificing yourself and, and, and your own needs for, for the for the sake of others. Not necessarily that now you're gonna be like a, a doormat, obviously, but because the Bible does say that we should be humble as doves, but be as meek as doves, but be as sharp as serpents. So in that being said, it doesn't mean which now you're going to allow anyone to be just, you know, just because you're for, for the sake of denying yourself. No, that, that is not what it means. So, yeah, you deny yourself. So you're denying your own desires. There are things that, like, being in a relationship with God costs you. Like, there's something I posted that, you know, uh, following Jesus is hard, but it is worth it. Because there are things that you like to do, that you know you want to do with all your heart. But because you're a child of God and a believer, you're just like, nope, it's not worth it. Like, because it, 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 even the Bible says that what, what, what benefit is it to gain the world and lose yourself, you know? So it's better to just follow Jesus and, you know, continue being one with him and cultivate a relationship with him then to be um uh then 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 to lose yourself in the process yeah, well, so as hard as it is his salvation um i don't want to lie and say come to jesus and all your problems will be solved come to jesus and you have money you have this 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 no 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 that's no that's not reality <laughs> coming to jesus does not necessarily mean that all your problems are gone, but even the Bible says that he makes, like, like he says in Matthew 11, verse 28, that you should take his yoke upon us and learn from him. So a yoke, we all know what a yoke is. A yoke is that thing that holds two cows together. It's pretty heavy. So him saying that take my yoke, it means that there is a burden that's going to be there, but he's as light and easy. So even when you're faced with challenges and difficulties, as in Zalwani or in this journey of salvation, it will, you will not be defeated, but you will, able, you will be able to conquer throughout. It will not be easy because the yoke, a yoke is heavy. A yoke is a burden. But him, with him, it will be a bit lighter, a bit easier. You know, it's, it's like how it was when 
last year and during the whole lockdown thing, COVID thing that was happening, you know, I felt sorry for people who didn't know God at that moment. You all the confusion, there's media, the side infil- infiltrating uh, whatever ideas, you're isolated, you know, you just, it was just a mess. And the only thing that, you, that the only coping mechanism at that time was literally Jesus. That's the only person that we had because we knew Guti, he is the one because you can't be with people, but you can be with him because his presence is not restricted by a church building. His presence is not restricted by because even now, as we are using this platform, Zoom, his presence is here. So he was the, literally the only person who kept us sane even during that period. Not saying that during that period, even three weeks, it was overwhelming. But Jesus made it a bit easier. I do not want to lie. Like if it was not if it was not there, we could have all experienced maybe our breakdown, our breakdowns, and gone through depression. You know all those things. But because he he was there, he kept us sane. You know, so that is what it means. Yeah, me 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 to um uh me 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 to salvation as much as it's 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 not easy, but it is doable through Christ Jesus who gives us strength. And then the second thing, okay, Bengusak, deny yourself. And then the second thing is take up your cross, which is what I've just explained now. A cross is just see, it's like a burden of, of I'm gonna put it that way. And also for me, a cross symbolizes crucifixion, because that is where uh oh Jesus, Jesus was, you know, crucified at Ilabambetelakon. So for me, that also means crucifying your desires, crucifying what you want for, for Jesus, you know. Because you understand that it's 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 that's better than what you want. His will for your life is much better than what you want for yourself. Even if <laughs> even if what he wants for you is not what you want, which pretty much most of the time it is. But just know that that's one that what he wants for you is better than what you want for yourself all the time, like all the time. So yeah, this take, that is taking up your cross, and then thirdly, following him. That is uh, uh, self-explanatory. Got the nation by making an example of Peter, no James, no Andrew. And then the third step. So you're now in agreement. So the agreement is to like, Okay, that means now you, uh, the, 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 the two of you, okay, you made the decision to agree to the proposal. Now you agreed. And then you come in now into marriage. So when you are now in marriage, it means that you know, there's a like in like just like any relationship, there are so many dynamics. And in the long run, it is easy for you to um get used to the person and end up um, for example, end up just not caring that much or not paying attention to to maybe their likes anymore, whatever, whatever, whatever. Yeah, yeah. So that so it's just like any relationship you need to constantly cultivate it. Meaning, coming up with new ideas, for example. What, this is what I've heard, because, yeah, from married people. Like, for example, so that just because now they're married doesn't mean that they, they're not in the dating phase anymore. So they continue to date each other. They'll have a date night, go out for movies, go out for this, this, and this, and this, and this, just to keep, you know, spicing up their relationship. Same goes with our relationship with Jesus. It can get. You could, you could, you, like, you could get quite, you know, I don't know if I'm daunting is the right word. I'm not, uh, yeah. So it can get quite stagnant if, ooh, 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 if the team, if Kubela wins isn't the same way. You can get familiar with God, which is dangerous because you start taking things lightly. Maybe before you sleep, I'm not king of it because it's just like, ah. God is my homie. He understands. You know, I love him, right? That's fine. Like, yeah, I can just do whatever that is <laughs> disobedient to him, whatever sin, and be like, he'll forgive me. Like, his grace is sufficient, right? Right? That's, yeah, that's, that are all the things that we, you know, uh, fool ourselves with. But if you are cultivating a relationship with God, continually wanting to spice things up, even with him, for example, you would pursue God in, let's say today you just thought, okay, 
you know, I always just pray and then read the word and then that's it. How about today I just start a little bit differently? I just start with worshiping. I have like a 15 minutes session of just worship and in songs, worship, worship, worship. And after that, you go into prayer and after that, read the word of God. Or maybe sometime you're just like, okay, um, let me watch maybe a 30 minute sermon and then read a scripture according to the sermon, sermon and then ying, ying, and then pray after that. Or some day you're just like, um, okay, let me do things differently. Let me, instead of just telling God about my needs, let me allow him to just speak to me. So you have like a session of meditation in God's presence. You just meditate and just play some worship music behind an instrumental or whatever. And you just meditate and listen to what he says instead of you always wanting to be the one, you know, because a relationship, remember, it's a two-way thing. And, 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 and when you have a relationship with someone, you want to have a conversation in your communication. So when you communicate, it's a conversation. So you say something, the person responds back and says something to you. So it should be it should be like that with God as well. So we always have to be at a place where we ask God, because God, help me to hear you and to be able to to discern is love is love to be able to uh, acknowledge which this is your voice and this is not your voice, you know, because. We cannot be the ones in Jalo, God, then thank you, amen, and not <laughs> hear what he has to say about that, you know? So it's, it's <clears throat> that's also another important thing. To just come in, 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 in one day, just, just resting in God's presence, and you just want to hear what he has to say to you on that day. So those are just the different ways of spicing up your relationship with Jesus. So, yeah. So, um, I think I've covered pretty much um, everything. Yeah. So I, I, I think I highlighted three steps in the pursuits. I said it's the proposal. Step two, the agreement. And then thirdly, when you are now in the relationship, uh, cultivating it and making sure that, you know, you're still loving on each other and you're still, you know, keeping things, you know, burning. And that's where you now think of various ways to, uh, pursue God back, which is through prayer, through worship, through even, even even coming to a Bible study like this, the fellowship. That's also another form of pursuing God as well, because you I flew Pangoguti. I wanna be in a platform where kona kona baza to read His Word. So reading His Word, you are pursuing Him. And another thing, oh I forgot, you cannot pursue someone that you do not know. Ne? So before you uzu agree this to the second step. Step one, after the the knock after Jesus has knocked on your door and you've made a decision to say yes, I'm agreeing, you have to intentionally want to know him so that you'll know what he wants from you, what he doesn't want from you as 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 his friend, as his daughter, as his son, as you know, all of that in the relationship that you have with him. He will be the one through his Holy Spirit who will be able to tell you what to as in, as your friend or as your father, I do not like one, two, three, and four. And this is what I expect from you. This, this, and this, and this, and this. And this is me. This is my character. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a forgiving God. I'm a compassionate God. I'm a providing God. I'm a promise-keeping God. And whenever I say I'll not leave you nor forsake you, I mean it, you know? So all these, like, look, the character of God is vast. Like God is described in so many ways in the Bible. So in order for you to be able to gain from the relationship and take from the relationship that you have with him, you have to know him and know his character so that you'll know what he wants for you and what he expects from you as well. So yeah, so that's step one, step two, and step three um, of the pursuit. I hope the analogy of marriage proposal makes sense and how... <laughs> Yeah, and how uh, salvation, what and what salvation is. I hope you took something from this um, Bible study session. So yeah, um, I don't know if there are any questions or uh, we should just close. I'm not quite sure.
or if there's anyone who wants to give their life to Jesus. I don't know, but I'll hand it over to Ozanel. Yeah, thank you. Oh, thank you so much, Lund. I really love the analogy. I'm not sure whether I'm saying that. Uh, sorry about that. Yes, thank you so much, sis. And I mean, I, I really love the analogy. So the first time Jenga used of it, I was like, okay, this makes more sense and it makes everything more simpler. And even with Jesus, you know, he used to do things like you would see also in the um, parables, just so we would see things. Okay, since I think said later that Kulu if ends and my parables is in this is one in our everyday life. So Namtanje, we chose the topic would say what is salvation because as the MSCF we know that we are at a, a period of building back again. So I, I would love to share the word which says um it's first Corinthians chapter three, verse ten. It says, By the grace God has given me, I lay the foundation as a wise builder, and someone else is building on it, but each one should build with care. For no one can lay a foundation other than the one already laid, which is Jesus Christ. So I think at this point, it's not only that we are laying a foundation, but rather we are just emphasizing what is already there because the, the Bible says, um, for no one can lay any other foundation either than the one that has already been laid, which is Jesus Christ. I think to me, this is just, it, it, it's okay, we have this foundation let's build with care good the foundation which god has already laid for us and on e parable on the seven to see the pursuit i like the fact that we are given a choice firstly you're given a choice that jesus is knocking and we are given a choice you know someone can be knocking at your door but you can choose whether you want to open or not this is a choice but rather like this choice has some benefits and when you've chosen what's okay now i'm entering in this relationship there are expectations and you cannot take my trade worker from your previous relationships to these new relationships and i love that um we have to cultivate this relationship by bible studies meeting with the saints worshiping and watching someone so i really thank god Bazalwane. Um, Bazan, I would really love to have a feedback from you in the way that we are conducting our Bible studies. Where to, if you would love us to add something, if you would love us to change, as in is, and we would really love that. So, thank you so much, Londi. I think, Manja, we can close in prayer and we'll see each other next week, same place, same time. Thank you so much, Bazalan. Let's just close in prayer and then sing that again.